head north to the Twin Cities and out into the countryside. And it won't take you long to realize that the tradition of waterfowling is a strong one in the Northern Plains. And the tradition of training and working with retrievers is at the center of that culture. So take the plunge with us as the Super Retriever Series heads north for another challenging competition. Ah! Well, this is the place, Oak Ridge Kennels in Northfield, Minnesota, the largest retriever dog training center in the northern half of the United States, and our spot this week for the Super Retriever Series. I'm Tommy Sanders, and we have got a heck of a show for you today. The big air dogs will be competing. That is always amazing. And our retriever trials will again be a hunt test of the highest order. Just as we took our dogs down in Stuttgart, Arkansas, through the actual rice fields, we're going to be taking these Minnesota dogs through a real northern tide course, through the corn stubble and into the cold water of one of the thousands upon thousands of ponds that dot this Minnesota landscape. Our retrievers analyst, Justin Tackett, he's standing by to show us just how demanding this course is going to be. Justin? Tommy, as the handlers come to the line, they're going to see a really wide open triple and a tough line. This looks like a gimme right here, but what the judges have done, they set this up to take this bank into account. You get a dog running the bank like that right there, you're going to incur some serious penalty points. Well, just as in Stuttgart, a complete set of challenges for these dogs. Tommy, let's take a quick look at the triple. The first bird's going to come out to the right at about 75 yards. It stays on the land. He's got to swing back, pick up that second mark, which is that cheating mark that the judges have set up. Come back to the middle, pick up the go bird at about 193 yards, fight off all the suction and get that blind. I'm Mark Fritzmeyer from Rochester, Minnesota. This is my dog, Emmy. I bought her as a seven week old pup and raised and trained her myself. Um, you know, she's a real nice dog for an amateur. She's been a real easy dog to train and she maintains her training so she doesn't have to take a lot. Mark Fritzmeyer and Emmy, the first of six teams in this first round of competition, three teams We'll advance to the finals here. Deal. Got a team of here. judges watching as well, Seven. and they will be assessing penalties. Yeah. Tommy, the judges have major and minor penalties. Some of the things that they're looking for for the major penalties are breaking whistle refusals. The minor penalties would include cash refusals, maybe unsteady at the line penalties like she just picked up Back. right there on the first mark. Two points for the minor infractions, five points for the major ones. Emmy's a good handling dog. She's a thinker, Tommy. Unlike a lot of the dogs we see, not real hard running, not real flashy, but real diligent, not going to make a lot of mistakes. Back! Mark Fritzmeyer, of course, handles and trains these dogs. Mark is an upland Back. and a waterfowl hunting guide, so uh, he stays pretty busy. I'm sure Emmy gets her fair share of uh, ducks during the year. Plus, he works in a job at the Mayo Clinic, so he's a busy guy. To say the least. This go bird's going to provide the meat of the marking. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. You know, they recently flooded this pond, Tommy, for the competition. The grass has floated to the surface. It's, it's made it extremely difficult to carry a strong line out there. Well, Emmy's got that one. She's rolling now. Now she's got to set up and run that cheating mark over there. Let's see if she sees the picture and she's able to Damn. do what Mark needs her to do. Excellent line. Excellent line to the mark. 27 points so far for this team. It's the second bird. Powell stepped right on it. You can all watch those points accumulate in the upper left-hand part of your screen. Be aware that sometimes they lag a little bit behind Damn. the point of the actual infraction. One of the reasons that it takes a little while longer is all the ESPN dog events are scored electronically. Two of the three judges must concur, and sometimes that takes a little time. Ready now for the Back. blind retrieve. It's a long one, 220 yards. Tommy, this is her strong suit. Just like I said, she's a thinker. She's going to be mistake-free on most of this stuff, and she's going to lay down, and she's going to let Mark handle her.
This is a situation you want to take the road less traveled, don't you think? I would think so. <laughs> Mark says Emmy's favorite activity is sleeping on the couch, so she has a lot in common with a lot of professional <laughs> athletes. A lot like me, Tommy. <laughs> Emmy and I would get along perfectly. That! You know, it's amazing how strong a little 65-pound Labrador can be. I mean... That's tough out there. Look at that. He's keeping her out of that old fall on that go bird. That's where the, when the judges set this thing up, they kept that in mind. Almost every mark and everything that was happening to the right side of the course has been over there, so they gotta keep them left. And looks like she's done a really nice job. Mission accomplished for Mark Fritz Meyer and Emmy, and they have acquitted themselves well. 40 points for this first team. Got a good shot to advancing to the finals. Got another yellow lab coming up next. Don't go away. We're back in Northfield, Minnesota, the Super Retriever Series. Next team to the line, Chuck Beckman and Maggie May. Another yellow lab. But a little bigger, this one. She's a big girl. Big girl. There's his right mark. Got to swing to the left. A little bit of duck calling on that second mark. The judges want to make sure that the dog marks that one. They've got an attention getter out there, Tommy. What they're trying to do is to see what level they've been trained at. I think he also put, I don't think he put but two shells in the gun. We didn't get a fire on that third mark. Thanks. The nerves have them all a little bit today. She's confused. I don't think she's marked anything but that right bird. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, she's fighting a little bit. He's got to get rid of that gun. You've got to be able to walk that cast out so that dog can see that, that strong picture of the cast that you're giving him. Got to get rid of that gun. He probably doesn't even know he has it in his hand. <laughs> I think he's a little shook up right now. Maybe he'll settle down. 28 points already. We're still on the first mark. That go bird is a tough mark. It's provided to be a lot more difficult than I thought it would be, that's for sure. Well, she's got it. Now let's see what she's got Thanks. on that left bird. I don't think she's marked that one either, Tommy. He's gotten rid of the gun, though. <laughs> They've got that going for him. Good girl. Chuck says Maggie is a strong swimmer, and we can see that. She's a big, powerful female. A little come in there. Here we go. Well, no bank running, and they handle Thanks. pretty well, but obviously you're right, Justin. She did not mark that no. bird. Come on, that girl. Good dog. Heel. Good girl. Good Short dog. mark is taken care Good of. Good girl. That girl. Okay, babe. Come on, we got another dead bird out there. Sit. Another dead bird. Back! Tell us what he means by dead bird. Tommy, dead means blind. That's her cue. What he's telling her right now is, hey, it's you and me. I didn't expect for you to see that mark. I'm going to handle you now. Take my whistles and my cash. We're going to get to the blind together. This is going to be especially difficult because, in essence, what she's done is run another blind Fire. almost to the same area. So he's going to have to doubly fight her there to get her to the left, get her out of all this trash, and get her over there to the blind. Over. Chuck says that if Maggie has a fault, one of them is that she relies on her nose too much. She thinks she knows more than the handler at times, and that's going to be a problem, especially on this blind. You're exactly right. Over! Well, Tommy, it wasn't pretty, but you got the job done. Well, 136, so a lot of points for Chuck Beckman and Maggie May. Let's see if that one holds up. Meanwhile, our big eared dog competition just about to get underway. The top eight dogs jump of the day will advance to the final rounds of the competition. 
38 dogs entered in this qualifying round, though, so there's plenty, plenty of competition to look forward to. Of course, it's like the broad jump. Each dog trying to jump the farthest. The official distance is measured from the rearmost part of the dog, excluding the tail. It hits the water right there. That's a good example. The 2002 Great Outdoor Games Big Air event will include the longest jumper in the final round of this series. But right now, we're going to take a look at some of the best jumps in the qualifying round. Coming up first is going to be Smokey, the Black Lab. Smokey's from Elk River, Minnesota. There he is. Don Heitland, the hand. Lean and mean Smokey. Here we go. Smokey likes the pheasant hunt. He chases gophers in the backyard. And he hits some good distance right there. Nice jump. Speed, height, and confidence equal distance. Absolutely no hesitation. Leaving that mark there takes full advantage of the course and a jump of 22 feet and 8 inches. Our first look at Ruger. Now, this guy is quickly becoming a crowd favorite here. We don't see too many German wire-haired pointers in the big air competition, but Ruger has got game. Look oh, at this. Yeah. Look at the height. Yeah. Yeah. Up above our backdrop there, Ruger, totally sensational on her takeoff. Tommy, I'd love to see her make it to the finals. To show the pointers can do this too. 21 feet, one inch for Ruger. What an effort. Coming up next is Bo. Bo is a three and a half year old chocolate lab. This team's from Robbinsdale, Minnesota. The other half of the team is Handler Moses Avalos. Loves to play with the kids. Big dog. A lot of power, though. A lot yeah, of power. Much like Smokey, absolutely no hesitation. Uses every bit of that dock. Hey, rips off a great little jump there. 19 feet, 11 inches for Bo. And there's your leaderboard after the first round of jumping with Smokey on top. The 22 feet, 8 inch leap there. Jump number two is still to come in our program. When we return, though, back out to the Retriever course on the Super Retriever Series. We are back on course. The next team to take the line will be Linda Twist and her dog, Cricket. I love the way Linda describes her profession. She says she's the Ed Norton of the Lake Minnetonka area. She works in the sewer system up there. It's right there. Yet. It's long. We're picking up this team with 41 it's points. Long. They've it's already radical. completed three retrieves, so ah. they're really not in bad shape at this point. Tommy, they're right in the middle of it. You know, for it to be this early in the year, these trialers up in the North Country around Minnesota area are doing outstanding. Uh, you know, it, it takes a little while to knock the rust off on these blinds. Let's hope she had the time to get it done. Ah! Think about it, they've had ice out for all of three or four weeks now. So really, you're right, there's been no training time. You know, Tommy, marks are easy to knock the rust off. All you have to do is go out and throw a few. But Over. blinds take a lot more time. Handling, teamwork, you got to spend the time. And I think that's Let's what's go. happening right here. They're just Over. a little rusty. Whistle after whistle, and you can see that point total climb. I hope she can hang in there and get out here. She's done such a good job on the marks. I hate for her to fall apart right here. Tommy, I just feel like that maybe Super Retriever Series showed up a little early for Linda this year. No, no, no! Crack it here! Here! Yeah, she's going to pick her up. She's tired of fighting. Well, this team will wait for another day. Three teams now have competed. The leader still Mark Fritzmeyer and Emmy. All right, here's team number four, Tom McMorrow and Shammy. Shammy, the big male yellow lad. Let's see what they got. First mark, a little unsteady at the line there. The attention get her out there. I don't know if you, mark, if you saw that. It kind of looked a little bit shaky. I'm not sure you saw that either. He's kind of clicking back and forth between the right Shut and the little bird. Pretty good line there. Tom and Shammy from Wizada, Minnesota. Big hunting dog. Tom's a serious hunter. Says Shammy picks up a bunch of birds for him during the year. He's fading to that right mark. He's got to get him over. A couple cash refusals there. Calendar boy. <laughs> he is a picturesque dog. Good looking boy. Come whistle there. He's refusing going back the other way. 
get a hand on it, Tom. 47 points already in the first bird. Well, this go bird has been really tough. I'm very surprised. See if she sees the concept here. Well, he's bank running, obviously. Yeah, he's, he's had to burn a whistle there. Tommy, I mean, when you factor in the attention getter and that mark being so close and so easy to see, it's really simple for the dog just to take that bank instead of doing what they should have been trained to do, and that's get wet, take a straight line to the mark. Short mark. About 75 yards. They're all seeing that mark real well. They're not having much trouble with that. Now for the blind. And there is a path that's already sort of hewn through those corn stalks and grass patches there. You know, when you consider the suction from the two marks on the right, and then you see this path right here, it's so easy for the dog to stay there, and that's not the way to go. That'll take them about 50 yards to the right side of the blind. It's not a straight line. They get four line penalties with five at a time. Uh, you can really rack up a lot of points, Over. and it's so hard to get them out of that path. Again, this blind is the final retrieve on the course. They've only got 59 points so far, but let's jump ahead. We're up on the bank. We've got 88 at this point. Tommy, this thing has been extremely tough top to bottom. You never know. That might be enough to get him in. Tommy Morrow and Shammy now in second place with just two teams left to go. All right, back to the big air competition. As you can see, it's mighty windy today. Whether or not that's going to affect the dogs is debatable. They seem to be jumping pretty well so far. The bubble figure about 19 feet. To advance to the finals, the next team to attempt, a familiar face, Tom Dropik, and his dog is Tucker. Last year's GOG bronze medalist and a man who knows how to work the crowd. Absolutely. Tom Dropik, one of the innovators in this sport. He devotes a lot of time to it, and Tucker, a lot of talent, as we can see on display right there. Not a whole lot of height, but this guy can really fly. He's strong. Very, very strong. Great speed at the takeoff. Translates into a great jump. 21 feet and 3 inches for Tucker. Now, one of the dogs who is going to be competing next time in the Retriever Trials. This is Flash. Doug Janes is the handler. Should he be worried about tiring this dog out? Multi-sport star, Tommy. Multi-sport star. Ah, it's sort of like the decathlon of dogs here That's today it. in Northfield, Minnesota. Again, looking to get over 19 feet here. Wow. Easily, easily for Flash there. Some incredible hang time on display. That's about 80 pounds going 40 miles an hour there, Tommy. Nice jump. And he gave up six inches on the takeoff there. But look at our new leaderboard, Flash, taking the lead 22 feet and 9 inches. Smokey moves down to third place. We're going to take a break. And when we come back, the last two teams in our retriever competition. Don't go away. We are back on the course. The dog is Moon, the handler, John Blackford, one of the most highly regarded handler trainers in the country. Moon! John Blackford, dog's name is GMHR Blackford Southland Moon MH. Uh, we're from Mora, Minnesota. We've transplanted up there out of the Twin Cities uh, after uh, I retired and the wife semi retired. He likes finding the birds and he does a good job at it and he really loves the games. And uh, this is something that uh, I think he really enjoys more than, more than being around the, the house. More than anything, he loves to train and he loves to hunt. Or oh, I'm talking. My turn. The first ah! retrieve was perfect, as were the next two. We're going to pick it up with the blind. Tell me that line on that cheating mark was absolutely textbook. Perfect. It can be done no better. Lining him up on the blind. If he keep the wheels on here, he's in great shape. Right back. Tommy, this dog is honest. He's not going to cheat John at all. They've been playing the game for eight, nine years. Uh, this is how the big boys do it. 
John says it's just as important for the dog to be a good companion. Maybe that explains part of the great connection these two have. One more strong cast ought to get him there. Left back. You can see the blind pole there. <laughs> a grand total of six points. What an effort by John Blackbird and Moon. That's my boy! I don't know if Super Sue and Jerry are watching right now, but uh, I'd be a little nervous. John Blackbird and Moon easily into the first position. Jason Smothers. I'm from Dyersburg, Tennessee, and this is Dusty. She's a hunting retriever champion, and the rest of her name is Grand Prairie's White Lightning. I've had her since she was six weeks old. I feel Here. like I know how she thinks and what she's thinking before she does it sometimes. And she knows what I want. We, I mean, we've worked together every day for six years almost. The relationship's pretty tight. We hunt together too. It's not just about playing this game, it's about hunting as well. Tommy, Jason and Dusty are our lone HRC on, team up here. They're from Tennessee where HRC is really prevalent. You can tell they've had Good a lot girl. of experience with guns at the line. She swings real well and used to marking off the gun barrel. Dusty, catch it up. Uh-oh, got a little recast right there. Back. She did not mark that, or, or maybe her memory failed her a little bit right there, and she was used to going on her name on something that she saw, and so he had to cast her, recast her with back, but she made it happen. Dusty. Short bird coming up, just 17 points. Burn a whistle there. Over. What? There's a third mark knocked out. They just got to keep the wheels on through the blind, and they're going to the finals, Tom. Great shot. You can see all the paths that these dogs have taken to that blind retrieve, most of them leading the dog to the right, and that's the way the course is set up. Tommy, I am so thankful Bye. I'm sitting up here with you today. Gosh, I would not want to be on that line right Ooh. now looking down that, those 1,900 paths. Over! One more good cast, and they're going Back. to the finals. Hey, hey, looks like that long drive from Tennessee was well worth it. 42 points ah. puts this team in third place, so Jason Smothers and Dusty will be around for the finals. Also advancing from this first round, Mark Fritz, Meyer, and Emmy. Of course, what a tremendous effort by John Blackbird and Moon. We will see the second half of this qualifying round, plus have plenty of big air dogs for you the next time on the Super Retriever Series in Minnesota.